Hey, Better Editors, what is up? My name is Chris, and today we start part nine of our 10-part series in learning Adobe Premiere Pro. The edit is almost done. We've just got to add a little bit of polish. That's right. We're going to clean up some audio. We're going to make the colors look good all the way through this thing and get it ready to ship out the door. All right, guys, today we finish. And by finish, I mean we're going to finish our piece. We're not going to finish the series. Ha! Gotcha, didn't I? Um, we've got a couple more things to do, but today what I want to do is add a layer of polish to our final edit. And by that, I mean I want to go through and make sure all of our colors and our piece look similar, that we can really make the whites and the blacks pop and just make things look better and really sell it as much as we can. Um, and the other thing is I want to go through our audio and make sure that our levels sound good. Now, I personally think we did a pretty good job whenever we edited the audio together when we started doing the sound effects together. But just to make sure, we need to go through the piece and clean everything up. So let's start with the audio. As a general rule of thumb, we're going to follow our audio levels up here, and we definitely don't want anything peaking. And something that peaks is what makes these two little boxes up here tick red. So as an example, if I crank this up, I'm just going to add a lot of gain to this. Let's say 8 decibels. Okay, let's come back and play it. All right, so you see up here where these markers turned red? That means that we are peaking. We are way too loud, and we don't want to send it on the internet. It's going to sound bad, and it's going to blow people away, especially if they have headphones on. I'm sure you've all been there where you started playing a video, and you were like, whoa, that's way too loud. This is what's happening. So let's undo that. So we'll pull that back. The gain is now back to zero where we want it. All right. And let's listen. Um, as a general rule of thumb that I try to live by, I try to keep all of my audio kind of averaging around the negative six decibel mark. Now, this changes when we start talking about dialogue and things like that, but for this video, we're gonna be good with just looking at those levels right at negative six. I know when we did the sound effects that we took this grinder down a lot. I'm actually going to bring it back up just a little bit so it's a little more jarring. If you noticed, it was hitting around negative nine, and I really want it to kind of just really come in and punch you in the face. So let's try that. And I'm also going to turn up the music some as well. And let's bring this music in a little bit louder. Not much, maybe two decibels. Let's bring this one up as well, two, and then I'm gonna bring this one up like two as well. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. Not a lot of work that we had to do there. So the next thing that we're gonna do is let's look at our color. I'm gonna cold shift and drag our video layers up so they all open up. And then I'm gonna make sure that my patch panel is targeted on V1. And let's go into sequence and say selection follows playhead. Now, when I scroll, I'm automatically gonna grab a playhead. And let's do some color correction. So go to window and grab the Lumetri color. Okay, so it might open in another panel for you. Obviously, this doesn't help us out very much. I'm going to drag mine up into my project panel window and move this over a little bit so we can work some. Okay, and we're only going to focus on the basic correction. This is all that we need for this video to make it pop. Now, obviously, you can learn and do a bunch of creative things with the rest of this panel and get to some really serious color correction, but that's more than what we need to get into right now. So for now, let's start here. This shot to begin with, looks pretty good to me. I might want to brighten up the whites a little bit. Let's go ahead and pull pull the exposure up a little bit more and make it pop there. Okay, that looks pretty good. We don't want to make it too white because we do like that it is a little, a little saturated there. It's a little, uh, I like the saturation, but I like that it's not super bright. Okay, and then I might want to add a slight vignette to this. Nothing crazy, but just a little bit to give it some drama. And then we'll feather it out some. So it's not a lot. You turn it on and off, you can see what we did there. 
but it just kind of makes you focus a little bit more towards the center. I'm actually going to reduce the amount to right about there. Okay, let's go back here. We can keep dragging. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that shot. Now, our next shot obviously has a big change in color. And though I like the yellow hue, I want it to match this clip a little bit more. So I'm going to show you how to do something that's really easy. We're going to match the color of that first shot. So let's go here and let's grab. We can see the yellow pretty well right here. And let's click on color wheels and match and hit comparison view. Now we have two views right here. I'm going to open up my panel a little more so you can see this. And let's drag to our first clip. All right. So this reference clip, see, reference clip, is what we want to make this color look like. So with this clip selected, this marker, I'm going to come over here and hit apply match. And after a little bit, look at that. Premiere automatically adjusted these color wheels and luminance values so that they came very close to what we have in our reference monitor. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's turn off the comparison view. And if you can't do it there, you can do it from up here and see what that looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks nice. And we're going to do the same thing right here with this clip. OK, let's use this as our reference and hit apply match. All right, look at that, man. Wasn't that nice? Super easy. OK. And now with this one, I also want to add a little bit of a vignette because we've got a lot of shadow here, not really anything here. Again, I don't want to get too crazy with it, just a little bit, and then I'm really going to blow out the feather so that if you see it, it's maybe too much. There we go. And let's do that. And I think that looks pretty good. Just gives it a little bit more drama. Up next. All right, so now we've got a lot of things going on in this shot. So with this shot, let's open up our basic correction. The color itself looks pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do is make the whites pop a little bit more by grabbing the highlights and pulling those up and maybe even doing the same thing with the shadows to brighten up the whole image, make the blacks a little bit milky. You'll notice that when you watch a lot of cinematic footage, um, like a movie, uh, the blacks are often very, uh, they're milky. They're not super crushed. They don't look like this. We don't want to see that because we lose a lot of definition. This, uh, this looks pretty good to me. I like the way that is. Um, I might make it a little bit brighter. Okay, that looks nice. Let's go to our next clip. Same thing here. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. I'm going to pop that up. I'm going to bring the shadows up some, make it make it bright. Like we want this coffee shop to feel bright and airy. This is totally different than the beans getting roasted. All right. And there's a little bit of blue in this, or maybe a little bit of yellow right there that I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm going to make that go away by just sliding this, cooling it off a little bit. Not much, just a touch, just a dab will do you. Go into the next clip and let's, rather than doing that whole thing again to this clip, Let's just copy and paste that effect. So I'll select this clip in the timeline, go up to my effect controls, hit control C, grab this clip, hit control V, boom. Looking good. Now this one still has a little bit more orange than what I want. I'm just gonna pull that out some, and this is all personal preference right now. Okay, so you do what you want to do. Make it look nice, something that looks good to you. And I'm gonna paste that same, color effect onto this clip and also pull that orange out just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Okay, this one is a little bit dark. So on this clip, what I'm going to do is crank up the exposure some. I don't want to go too much because if you start pushing exposure too much, you'll start noticing a lot of noise in the black. You'll also see this is way, I mean, it looks like we're, uh, you know, in heaven at the pearly gates don't want that look. So let's pull this down right about here. Okay, great. And then I'm also going to push up the highlights on their own and make it look really bright in here. And same thing again, let's just lift the shadows a little bit. Okay, that's good. Might be a little bright. I'm going to pull back our exposure just a hair. And let's pull those back. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now on this clip, the white has got our focus, and I really want to emphasize that. So I'm going to pump up the highlights some, definitely push up the shadows. 
and then I'm gonna pull up the whites. This one you've gotta be careful with because if you push it too far, it starts to do funny things here. See how there's this kind of curve right there? That's the whites clipping. We've pushed them way beyond where they need to go. So let's dial that back to where it's white, but not too white. All right, and you can see what we've done to it. It's a big difference, right? Okay, now this clip is a little dim and the color's a little bit off. There's a lot of blue and green going on in the whites and I really want this white to look white. So to do that, I'm gonna grab this color picker, come to what I consider the whitest part of the image and click. All right, so very minor shift, okay? I still think there's a little bit of green, especially in the shadows, so I'm gonna push our tint a little bit, not much. And then let's turn up the exposure, really get some white in there. Let's pull up the shadows so we can see more of, especially where the, uh, the espresso machine is. And notice we're starting to clip down here on these white levels. So I'm gonna pull the exposure back just a little bit. And I feel like that looks pretty good to me. It's still a little bit dim which I'm not a huge fan of. So I think what I'm gonna do is something a little tricky. We're gonna come here and we're gonna duplicate this effect. So I'm gonna select the effect, hit Control C and Control V, and then I'm gonna reset this effect, okay? Now let's zoom out to say 25% and open up our second Lumetri effect. And I'm gonna grab this pin and draw right here. I'm just gonna draw a big square and make what they call a power window. All right, that looks pretty good. And in here, now I'm gonna jump back over to my Lumetri panel and pull up the exposure. And notice it's only affecting this left-hand side. If I turn that off, see, it gets darker over there. Pretty nifty, huh? And since this clip itself isn't moving, we don't have to worry about tracking that mask or doing anything crazy like that. But it's really white and looks real nice right now. All right, okay, and our next clip. Okay, this one's also dark, so let's pull up the exposure on this. Not too much, pull up our shadows. Not too much, and then our highlights, make them pop. And this one, I also wanna make, uh, make it a little more saturated, like really, this is only gonna affect our coffee because everything else in this image, if you look at it, is white, and basically black, but this brown coffee color, if we pump up the saturation some, will really enrich it. Notice what that looks like if we turn it back down to 100. See, it's just a slight punch, but I think it helps. This one already looks really good. I love that color. I love the red hue that's in it. Now, this is our last bit of coffee. This one is a little bright, so I'm going to grab the shadows, I'm gonna crunch them just a little bit. The highlights, pull them back some, and that looks pretty good. And I might push the exposure a little bit. I don't wanna to get too crazy because this orange in the background is gonna get nuts, so I might just do that like 5%. Okay. Okay, and on to our last clip. So for this, let's go ahead and turn off our logo animation. And I just want to pull up our shadows. Just so it's not super dark. Maybe really pull up those whites so we see those highlights. Again, don't get too crazy. Don't get too carried away. And something we can do here. No, I like that. I think that looks good. All right. Let's play it back. Something that will help you if you do a lot of effect work on your clips is to render out your timeline before you play it back so you can see it exactly how it's going to be once you export it. To do that, go to Sequence, Render, In to Out. Since we don't have any in or out markers marked, it's going to render the entire sequence. Let's go to the front and see how this looks.
that is our edit. Guys, I hope you're happy with all the hard work that you've done. We have a really solid piece right now that I think any coffee shop would be happy to throw on their social media account. So up next is the end.